Today is March 15th. It's been maybe three seconds since I, I literally, I mean, my first thought was April 15th. And I was like, it's not April yet. Well, listen, I can't brain. It's so, yeah, brain it's, is uh, not on today. Your attempt was unlucky. There's a hint. 13th. Hey. 13th. Wednesday the 13th. And we're doing a lot of business. And uh, this one is a sad one. And if you... This was a sad video clip. If you stand against the juggernaut that is Alphabet, this is what you get. See, the moment 43 unionized YouTube contractors got laid off. They were literally like complaining at like a city hall. And then one of them comes up and it's like, we all just got laid so off. So here's the moment. Here's, yeah. She's like, uh, yes, we've all been fired. She had a, like, she didn't seem too upset about it. She yeah. kind of like, well, she seemed a little upset. It, under the under the rules there, Google was supposed to have met with union leaders because they unionized a while ago. And so last year, you think maybe union like inside Google's like we got to we got to get rid of them. That's well, right. I think technically because they were subcontracted by another company. Yeah, yeah. they don't have to. Now the Google's up uh, excuse for this was this was a subcontracted team. And we didn't fire anybody. We simply let the contract expire this month. So, but doing it while they were—I mean, come on. Yeah. Like they, who's stupid enough to think that wasn't a targeted message? We all know what they were doing. Yeah. But they're going to get away with it. <clears throat> and uh, the layoffs didn't have a lot of them this week, but we did have one tardy layoff that they couldn't fit in last week. Facebook Messenger has laid off fifty employees. Once again, it says it's all for efficiency. Yeah, efficiency. Messenger's getting rethought, isn't it also? Because doesn't Facebook have a lot of messaging subcomponents at this point between Snapchat and Instagram and everything else? I don't use the app, so I don't know how all the Messenger stuff works. Well, who knows how bad things really are, but I think we're going to get a little bit of a measuring stick here because how many of the cult members are actually going to be able to pony up these kinds of prices. The M3 MacBook Air review, redefining portable performance. I would disagree with that, but that's <laughs> cool. The uh, the M3 is a very, very, very modest incremental improvement. Remember when they went from Intel to ARM and it was just, it was amazing and breathtaking? And then since the M1, Apple's improvements have been lackluster at best. The biggest improvement here is that with the lid closed, you can now run two displays on a MacBook Air instead of being limited to just the one. Now, as you can see here, the base model is just over a grand. With eight gigabytes of memory, which is sad and pathetic. That You should minimally have that for your GPU. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny because it's true. And uh, over in China, they are claiming some very amazing stuff. They're claiming a actual uh, same level of performance as AMD asterisk in 2020. <laughs> Huawei's new CPU matches Zen 3 in single core performance. High silicon Taishan V120 server CPU benchmark. That's pretty awesome if they're already at Zen 3. That was a quick run up to that. Yeah. If they really have that. Now you always take that with a grain of salt I guess. With any benchmark right? Time to try to sneak in some more Hygon servers. Now, let's take a little trip back in time and remember when Mark Zuckerberg assured all of us that Oculus was not getting consumed by Facebook. <laughs> you were going to keep your Oculus account. They were going to keep the Oculus branding. The Oculus employees were going to continue to direct the project. That lasted for, what, a year? Not Less even. than a year? And now, the final nail. Meta says it's deleting all Oculus accounts at the end of the month. You'll lose all of your games and purchases and store credits if you don't migrate to a Meta account by March 29th. The one thing this story missed was reaching out to Palmer Lucky to ask, So, how's that working out for you? Uh, on his yacht? <laughs> if that was his goal, then it's I guess going that's going pretty fine. good, bro. <laughs> I just had 30 fresh shrimp and a massage. <laughs> HP, I think they are trying to become the most hated company in the universe, and they're trying hard. HP wants you to pay up to $36 a month to rent a printer that it monitors. 
Never own a printer again. It'll be cheaply made and bad, and you also won't own it, so you won't be allowed to modify it. Who's, who looks at that picture and is like, yeah, that sounds good. So listen to these deals. This is so insane. The bottom level tier was what, like I think $6 a month? You get 20 pages. 20 pages. <laughs> Thinking about that document we made earlier this week. Yeah. <laughs> like how many, but that was, that would have just immediately eaten that up. And uh, you have to sign up for two years. And if you quit early, you will pay a penalty for quitting early, depending on what level of service you have. It could go up to $270. Or regressing. Like AT&T wasn't this evil when they were making people rent telephone lines and paying per telephone jack in their house. That's This absurd. is worse than when the power company wanted to charge you different rates between your light bulbs and your toasters. I was recently, my parents got a new streaming service and their TV is not 4K. And I was trying to explain to them the technological advancements that we've had in panels and why they should upgrade. <laughs> and the blank stares were just like, no, nah, sorry, bro. Most of the world doesn't understand these things, which is why they can get away with this. <laughs> Samsung is making it harder to know exactly what type of OLED TV you're getting. And this article clumsily implies this has to do with LG because LG doesn't want you to know what kind of OLED panel you're getting either. So Samsung's got the quantum dot, LG's got the white OLED, and the new panels that Samsung is, or the new models that Samsung are selling are a mix and match, but you can't get to the bottom of which one you're getting. Some people have worked out that uh, Samsung doesn't make certain sizes of panels, so they're pretty sure if you get that size, you're getting the LG. Or at least WOLED. WOLED, how do you say it? WOLED. It's a little clumsy. Yeah. Or are you still are you still enjoying the OLED? Is it transformational in terms of image quality and blacks and response time? It is fantastic, but yeah. the Twitch chat's always busting my balls because like in Pacific Drive, it's often dark and I can't tell what's going on and the headlights malfunction constantly. And I'm like, I can't see anything, chat. And they're like, we can all see it. <laughs> <laughs> the Pixio is getting ready to come out with an OLED display that looks fantastic. So reviewing that now. It's got some bugs I found that they're fixing. So that's nice. Well, Intel, they are on their quest to become the foundry of choice and to partner with everybody. But it wasn't quite setting the world on fire. So now they've got a new patron. Intel will get three and a half billion infusion from U.S. government to make chips for the military. Advanced packaging technology. Everything made in America. If we have any Iraqis in the audience, I'm sure you'll get to see some of that from the wrong end. <laughs> oh, that's good. I was going to say some other country, but that's fine. That's, I mean, it could be any at this point. We have like a roulette wheel. Uh, no matter who attacks us, I think every 20 years we have to attack Iraq. Mm. It's in the Constitution at this point. <laughs> We weren't involved. <laughs> <laughs> so you never have been, bro. <laughs> this is just what we do. <laughs> and Roku. Uh, remember when Roku was the like the alternative to the awfulness? Remember when they were amazing? There was a time. The great devices that worked fairly well and were cheap. Well, what have they become? Roku issues a mandatory terms of service update that you must agree to or you cannot use your Roku. So this has to do with arbitration and how you agree to arbitration. And so if something goes wrong, you're not allowed to just sue Roku. You have to go through arbitration. Well, with this update, if you didn't want to agree to that change, it just simply doesn't work anymore. You can't say no and keep using it as it is. That's disallowed. That seems like that would be grounds for a tort in and of itself. How about some DMA? Right? Yeah. Shouldn't there be a DMA something in there for that? <laughs> Lena! What are you doing? She's hearing people just scream constantly because there's so much. Why would they scream Lena and not Khan? Oh. I mean, it's so obvious. <laughs> it's an amazing rug pull. And this is not like, I'm so tired of this kind of thing where it's like, oh, the device works different today than it did yesterday. No, stop that. We're going to talk about that with cars too. Well, this is going to be no end to your weariness going yeah, yeah. forward. I so guess. Software it's defined a cars. It's like, no, just stop this. Stop it. One of the stories I've been seeing a lot is the sort of like doomsday warnings of like, hey, we're all using too much electricity. What's going to happen with our grid? The grid can't handle it. But of course, then we saw last week that the grid is being actively nerfed <laughs> for line go up reasons. Amazon knows that. And they're like, uh, we don't have time to play these games. 
Amazon just bought a 100% nuclear powered data center. Why? Because energy companies <laughs> right there. are playing line go up problems. <laughs> That's going to be a, an amazing Counter Strike map. Oh, wow. Yeah, that would be a great one. Because you could be inside the data center. Uh, Ready or Not's got the data centers. Yeah. Oh, well, then uh, Battlebit had the reactor map as well, where you could like set up in the reactor. And most of you are letting the screens raise your children. What are the effects of that? We really don't know yet. Even though we're learning pretty quickly that it's probably nothing good, now we have a study. Screen time robs the average toddler of hearing 1,000 words a day spoken by adults. The Some words mostly, stop, get off that, knock it <laughs> off. You're letting all the cold air out. Well, apparently they need to hear that yeah. because their language skills are suffering. I can believe that. Peppa Pig is not a replacement for actual human voices, it seems. A lot of kids shows, they use kid dumbed down language and you need, you need the kids to hear adult language. Yeah. Not necessarily swearing, but like larger words. Now that's tough on our kids. Modern kids have it kind of rough, but here in the West, when we say that, we're standing on a, an interesting pedestal because <laughs> there are some kids in the world who have much tougher lives and they have those tough lives in order to service our largest we should probably not think about that for our mental health, right? Big tech firms beat lawsuit from child laborers forced to work in cobalt mines. It turns out child laborers can't afford good lawyers. Yeah. There's a book I have on my audiobook list called uh, Cobalt Red, which covers this. And it's supposed to be absolutely horrific. So I think, I'm trying to remember, I might be misremembering. I think it's Fairphone who gets their cobalt from fair trade places. But how much can this? you really trust that? Yeah. So the argument here was that like Google, for example, should be responsible. But Google is like, hey, we just buy the cobalt. We don't necessarily know where it comes from. But that's true of a lot of things. Like, I'm sure I eat some food. Like, there's probably some fruits I enjoy that are totally child labored. So should I be in trouble for that? <laughs> See, also look in, looking into uh, the uh, American Fruit Company or United Fruit Company. Or even just chocolate. You can buy fair trade chocolate, but it's a lot more expensive because... Mm. It's not child labor. Well, the Flipper Zero is taking the world by storm, and it's nothing good is happening from that, but we're learning new ways that it can be used, and this one's a little bit more complicated than your usual uh, keyless entry hack. Man in the middle phishing attack can let attackers unlock and steal a Tesla. This has to do with impersonating a Wi-Fi access point. So it's not even using the same, like the Kia hack, which is relatively trivial. This one's a fair bit more complicated. So... Tesla free Wi-Fi, right? Almost every charging station has a Tesla free Wi-Fi access point. Guess what the people with the flippers are doing? They're creating their own Tesla free Wi-Fi access point. And when you log into the Tesla portal, which is fake, they create a new software key for your vehicle, which lets them do whatever they want. Fabulous. And think about how insane this is. When someone creates a new key for your vehicle, there's no text message or email. When I change my password, my bank sends Literally me like 12 else. emails. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Was this you? Was this you? Yeah. Over at Tesla, they're not concerned about that kind of thing. I would go so far as to like the car initiates a certain honk pattern every time it gets a new key. Or pops up something on the screen it's like hey are you aware that there's a new key press okay oh yeah you can go into the settings thing and it'll be like i'm currently paired to these like discord wow discord yeah. has better security <laughs> than a tesla that's insane it's like i can see you're logged in in these locations oh that's neat do you think that decision is laziness or we don't want to hire a text message service or our users are too stupid for that and they well, don't want to be annoyed a little of all those columns probably i suppose that's true yeah. well put some f's in the chat because here's the end of a long running series of beautiful video cards. The NVIDIA GTX branding finally reaches the end of the line. After 19 years, the last GTX 16 series chips have reportedly left the foundry. Shout out to those of you in the audience that are still rocking your GTX 1080 or your 1080 Ti. It's still a pretty viable card, just barely in 2024. The same people that have those 15 year old Toshibas. That's right. <laughs> And good news, if we're ever going to escape the horrible uh, telecom provider, uh, phone provider, you know, lock-in that we're getting, 
Of course, we'll have to lock in with another horrible organization, won't we? <laughs> SpaceX's cellular Starlink had 17 megabit download speeds to an Android phone, an unmodified Samsung. But they did admit that this only works in really rural areas where there's already not a lot of cell phone coverage because interference will knock it out. And also, these satellites were a lot closer to Earth than they're going to be ultimately. So this is going to be a very low-speed connection, even though it is ubiquitous. <laughs> I, I missed this. This is was this one. This is what I was talking yeah. about earlier. Yeah. Yeah, you read it because I put it in here. I've somehow completely missed this. I don't know how. Apple reinstates Epic developer account after public backlash for retaliation. Yeah, Apple is scared to death more about people are going to realize that they're not that good. It's just that, you know, they're just not that good. Well, you know who else is not that good? Warner Brothers Games. <laughs> and they're kind of realizing it. Warner Brothers discusses volatile AAA console games and will learn to be, uh, will lean into free to play and mobile. But didn't they do that big Harry Potter game last year that was like huge on Twitch for a little bit? Well, but they it, got the backlash. That's it got, true. It got the backlash because of. Uh, well, it's just who it was associated with because mm-hmm. of the author, not necessarily because of the yeah. game itself. But I, did, I thought that game was kind of trash. I didn't like it, but a lot of people did. Hmm. A lot of people played it. Well, apparently they didn't make what they wanted to make on it. I, I, think, really, I really think they ought, to, they ought to, like, in terms of like, Universe and story immersion and blah, blah, blah. Hogwarts Legacy wasn't anywhere near as good as, like, mm, Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic. Like, that was good story, very immersive. That's probably a better story than some of the newer Star Wars movies. Yeah, well, I mean, the universes aren't equal there. I feel like, though, like, it was a beautiful environment, but, like, I felt like it was just tutorial mode. Like, we played it for, what, three or four hours, and it was just, now go do this, now go do that, now go do this. It was like it was constantly teaching you mechanics. But not in a fun way. Also, I think every game company is kind of done with the whole like, oh, let's make a game and sell it and then be done with it. Now it's all microtransactions and Mm. subscriptions. you got to keep generating money for your investors to be happy. And for your investors to be happy, you can never let a single person view one pixel of your copyright content who has not paid. (laughs) Max confirms 2024 password crackdown explores adding transactional ads. This is HBO Max. It's like, no. It's like, (laughs) I've detected someone unusual in your living room. You're going to have to pay extra. That's where they're going. I wonder if they'll do this right before uh, Hot D releases House of the Dragon. Oh, probably. Oh, we got a new season of that coming Yeah. So Max is HBO Max or, you know, some iteration of what it used to be. And a lot of people were like, but HBO never had commercials. That's why we chose you. And they're like, you're getting commercials. I really wonder how under U.S. property law that you're, you know, you buy something, but you're never allowed to take possession of it. Therefore, you didn't buy it. Like how, how has that not already been a lawsuit? Because they can... Like they can keep you in court for years and years and years and appeal it at every level and there's nothing you can do about it. And there's nothing you can do about this, which is Microsoft continually making the Windows 11 experience as bad as possible and week after week raising the stakes. Copilot pain as annoying as Clippy may pop up in Windows 11. Yeah, I don't, I'm convinced that no one actually using Windows is in charge of Windows because it's, it's. (sighs) That's not if you click on it. That's if you mouse over it. Yeah. Which you will accidentally do a lot. And then lines going to go up on somebody's engagement dashboard. It's like, boy, those people are really engaging with the co-pilot thing since we added the code. <laughs> Let's add more of that. They added it to Edge because I was looking at something in Edge the other day. And I went to copy some text and mm. it immediately was like, you want co-pilot to look at this? And I was like, leave me alone. No. For now, you can still turn it off in the taskbar settings, but uh, probably <laughs> not if you're unactivated, right? And uh, there's no guarantee that they'll let us keep that setting. Again, those same people are going to notice that the line stopped going up and they're like, why are we letting them turn it off? Yeah, I love how in the start menu preferences for web search, you can turn on and off whether or not it's adult safe or not, like adult content safe, but there's no off option because everyone would pick off is why there's no off option. Well, you're going to get some new options if you are upgrading to the newest iOS and Europe i was 17.4 is here and ready for a whole new europe yeah they they took it it's uh it's not great it's not fabulous you can run your own browsers now you can uninstall safari we've already talked about that and all the dma 
you know, following the letter of the law, but not really kinds of things. Plus new emoji for everyone. Brown mushroom emoji. Oh. They did backpedal on uh, progressive web apps. So if you add an, a web app to your home screen, that is currently functional, more functional than it was in the beta. And the performance still isn't there. Like if you use WebGL, uh, WebGL still runs really bad. Like that's unchanged. Whereas it runs pretty good if you embed a Safari control inside an application. Because again, Apple doesn't want a progressive web app to be good enough to supplant the income from the app store. It's weird how that works. And uh, a lot of this gatekeeper talk and locking people into your walled garden is definitely spooking some of the companies. Amazon is trying to get out ahead of it. Amazon's AWS removes data transfer fees for clients switching to rivals. Now, there were already some cloud providers that, that did this, and Apple or, uh, and Amazon got a lot of criticism for not allowing this. It's like, oh, you're never going to be able to get your data out. So some companies didn't want to put their data in in the first place. Well, now it's no cost, basically, to get your data out. And <laughs> here's an example I fear that might be too little too late, but Google is finally realizing that their product is trash. Google is starting to squash more spam and AI in search results. Not Yay! well enough. But it's a start. They claim this is going to be a 40% improvement. That's we'll enough. see. <laughs> I saw uh, in one of the articles this week, someone had linked a video that was like AI. Oh, it was the, the kid story. AI, like how to make AI generated content for children to make money on YouTube. And it was showing like a bunch of channels that were making a ton of money, just like regurgitating like ABC stuff. And it's all just AI generated. Now they didn't mention YouTube there. That's just search results. Yeah, so yeah. Who knows? But that's but what the whole internet's going to be. One of the reasons that Google might have all of a sudden realized that, hey, we need to do something would be this kind of headline. Gardner predicts search engine volume will drop 25% by 2026 due to AI chatbots and other virtual agents. Yeah. I've, I've gotten a few local models running for code help and for stuff that is just like, I really should look this up in the documentation that I would normally Google and look at Stack Overflow for. Mm. The, the chat model is better because uh, I can also give it a prompt that's like, always give me a, an elaborate response like it's a documentation page, manual page, and it's like, okay. And it doesn't you know cut me off. If you try to do that with ChatGPT, ChatGPT gets kind of lazy and it doesn't want to give you an elaborate response. Is this the year? Yes. It's not. No. It's definitely yeah, well, not. Well, look at be. this huge it's, market share. It's not going to be the year. Linux crosses 4% market share worldwide. This is mainly due to India, where Linux desktop usage in India is past 15%. Double digits. It's driven also by the Steam Deck. The Steam Deck mm -hmm. is a very effective Linux platform. Imagine the advantage those Indian kids are going to have when they grew up with Linux and came over here with their H1Bs and our kids have just been on iPhones their entire childhood. <laughs> we really need more of them What's over a file here. directory? <laughs> <laughs> They're going to be writing like kernel modules and device drivers. Like That's going to be amazing. Well, well, this, one, ma this makes me so sad. One team that yeah. won't be writing any more code, unfortunately. We just missed this last week for the update and we were all like hopeful yeah. And unfortunately, all of you already knew. Nintendo Switch emulator Yuzu has shut down, and they have to pay $2.4 million to settle the lawsuit from Nintendo. They didn't go to court. This was voluntary, but this does end their pain and suffering immediately. Can't say that I blame them. In, in, Nintendo did have some, some pretty egregious stuff where uh, there were screenshots and some other things of people on this team sharing ROMs via Discord, which is not okay. And Citra, another... Uh, DS 3DS emulator got caught in the flack here and also is going down. Oh. Yeah. This is not good. But again, you know, Nintendo is not nearly as sociopathic as Apple, but I don't, can't support Nintendo. I don't know. It's pretty close. No, oh, Apple's far worse. Well, Apple is, uh, you know, they want you in the walled garden and the way they keep you there is by not giving you any choices. And like Krista just said, you know, if you're a young kid just living on your iPhone, you might not understand what a file system is. <laughs> and Apple's solution to that is like, you don't need a file system. You just need iCloud. But iCloud is pricey. Class action lawsuit argues iCloud fees are too high. 
What if you want to back up your phone to Google Drive? There's no facility to do that. How do you just back up your information? No, this is a phone. It's not a, it's, it's not a computer. That's not a valid excuse. It so, is a computer. If you have used iCloud in the last, uh, was it like two years or something, you can join this class action suit if you wish. Some stuff you can back up to places, other places, but most things you can't. Something that just blows my mind is if you're using the Apple um, phone application on the iPhone 15 and you try to save to Google Drive from the phone application, it just doesn't work. It shows that it's uploading forever. You have to actually go to the Google Drive application and then browse into the camera stuff and then upload it from there. You can't just, it acts like it'll let you save it to Google Drive, but you can't. We have to give Apple credit for the whole business model of you buy a new phone every year, right? Yeah. Never use a device until it's broken or no, no longer valid. You must update over and over every year. And everything that they do kind of pushes you into that lane. Now think about the fact that a lot of car companies are using the phrase smartphone on wheels and put the two ideas together. Nissan drops app support for the original Leaf. Are EVs now as disposable as iPhones? Yes. The Leaf had some cool features. You could start warming the battery and turn the heater on remotely from your phone, right? Have a nice warm car that's all the battery's conditioned and ready to go. You won't be doing that anymore. You want to monitor your charge level remotely from your living room? Nope. You know what I could still do that with? An ESP32. A $7 microcontroller that can connect to Wi-Fi. Just give me some pin headers and like I can plug in my own little thing and just plug it into Home Assistant. Home Assistant can wake, wake it up and do it for me. They're, no, they're not going to give you that access. Mm. Their recommendation is you're going to have to get a smart plug yeah. to operate the plug before anything in the car. Everything is terrible. I mean, we like it's so it's such a paradox is we, we're always down on this every week. We live in like the most exciting time in history, and yet, like, we lived. <laughs> the yeah. most exciting well, time I think history. it's still going to be exciting, but maybe in a different, horrible sort of way. Well, instead it's of- like uh, the, from Discworld, the, one of the greatest curses was "May you live in interesting times." No, yeah, that's yeah. <laughs> Ever since 2020, that is where we're at. We have we have all this ubiquitous AI and access to all of this information, and individuals can do so much stuff, and then. You just if you pay them money. Yeah, it's just we we are we are inflicting suffering on one another for no good reason. Like, now the line has to go up. It's like on on an Apple device. Just let me run an arbitrary program. How hard is that? It's not hard. It's fine. <laughs> now you may have heard Mark Zuckerberg chime in a couple of times on the whole Apple versus Epic or Google versus Apple thing, and he might have said some bad things about Apple and how they try to control everything and how they take a cut when they probably shouldn't and they restrict his software when they probably shouldn't. And now he's ignoring all of that (laughs) and announcing this. Meta plans to take a nearly 50% commission on purchases made inside the metaverse (laughs) despite complaining about Apple's 30% App Store cut. (laughs) Listen, it's okay if I do it. Also, the kind of stuff they're talking about doing here include, uh, he's still trying to do NFTs. Yeah. Like Mark, bro, what year is it? You gotta let it go, man. It's not let the dream go. (laughs) Just get back to slaughtering your goats. (laughs) He still thinks metaverse is gonna be a thing. Fifty percent, though. I mean, we added legs again. If IBM had said, "Oh, if you're gonna develop programs for the IBM PC, we want fifty percent," it would have been DOA. The other thing that's gonna be DOA is Facebook. Because as it ages and its user base ages, no one cares about it anymore. Except the Facebook users themselves who have <laughs> dedicated their whole lives to it. And now as they begin to have security issues, it seems like Facebook just doesn't really care. Meta abandons hacking victims draining law enforcement resources. So when people lose their Facebook account, there is no real way to contact Facebook. So they call the cops. Which is insane to me. But Well, what are you going to do? I've been deprived of something that used to be mine. I've been robbed, I guess. Uh, Do you have damages there? You've never paid for it. Yeah. I mean, but they have been using your data. Yeah. be an interesting court case. But those people are really not getting any help. And so a bunch of uh, attorneys general, someone called me out in the contest for uh, comments for saying attorneys general instead of attorney generals. That's correct, bro. <laughs> 
Uh, Confidently incorrect. A bunch of attorneys general are getting together and trying to do something about it. It's an election year. And the old social media, one of the things that they see on the horizon is being forced to open up their services. And some of them are trying to get ahead of it in kind of a small way. Thread says it will make its API broadly available by June. Theoretically, the promise of the API, sometimes you hear us say it, is the promise of your data can live anywhere and or everywhere. So if you want to use Threads or you want to use Musk's X or you want to use Jack Dorsey's Blue Sky, you can be on all of them in, from one application and posting and sharing or move your data from one to the other to the other. I mean, that seems reasonable. And because the giant tech companies behave like wild horses and as soon as one starts running, they all start running in the same direction. <laughs> TikTok launches data portability API ahead of Europe's DMA regulatory deadline. Again, it's the same kind of a concept, but it's always a race to see how petty and petulant <laughs> the individual companies can be. Usually with Apple being far out and ahead of everybody else, just taking the petulance to a whole new level. And when it comes to social media, you could make a good argument that the only place left on the internet where there's any real interaction is Reddit. That's where all the search results are going because that's the only place that real people are having real conversations. But real people having real conversations can be very threatening to line go up. Reddit rolling out AI bouncer to halt harassment. Reddit is wrapped. I mean, it, it's already been in shitified, but it's going to get worse and, and everyone will have to exit us. There's to so much else. room for it to get worse. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know if this is like... On the one hand, like we're going to put all the, you know, you've got a large language model that's looking at literally everything that you're doing on Reddit to figure out if you're a right toxic user. That could be an interesting, you know, bad behavior modifier mechanic thing. But think about playing with large language models. How often yeah. they tell you it's like, oh, no, I can't talk to you about that. Yeah. That might be bad. I don't know that it's bad, but it might be. So we're just going to ignore it. Yeah. That's what Reddit's going to become. That seems like the likely outcome, especially as they turn the uh, complexity down and they make it dumber and dumber until the the anti-abuse thing is like, mm, I don't know, go away. And it seems like the dream job of a lot of the young people these days is to become a TikTok influencer. Please and know. a lot of people seem to think that that's just like, just go do that, right? Just, yeah, it's really easy to, to just be a YouTube influencer. Yeah, just <laughs> just have easy. more money on TikTok, right? AHS manager tells healthcare workers to become TikTok influencers to supplement their income due to policy limiting overtime. Who's this manager? <laughs> Was there a name mentioned in this article? Uh, Actually, I guess that would be like doxing. Royal but. Alexandria Hospital. That's the, the hospital that it, they're working at. The person. Probably because they knew they'd get threats. <laughs> oh, Harrigan. Oh. Oh, no, that's that's one of the victims, I think. It just says manager goes on to note. That's yeah. hilarious. They're just like, yeah, just start an OnlyFans. What's, well, one what's of the, the things they're complaining about start is a TikTok. Like, there's too much overtime. We can't afford it. But it's like, well, if there's too much or overtime, isn't that a management problem? Did you not schedule incorrectly? Did you not hire incorrectly? No, no, that's the employee's problem. <laughs> Somehow we have to. Well, some of the some of those folks are willing to. It's like I'm gonna work for a couple of months and you know work. 50 hours a week or whatever to save up for a vacation or something. Okay, whatever. Those nurses should start like doing TikTok videos while they're working with the patients, you know? That's like, frowned upon. That no, is, yeah. But I'm saying like they like, get caught like twerking on one of the coma victims or something. And when they try to fire them for it, it's like, wait, wait, hang on. Let's go you back to the me. email. Yeah. <laughs> this would make for some amazing episodes of House. <laughs> That's, he always hung out with the coma patients because yeah. he wouldn't be bothered. <laughs> And our last, you know, this has already happened and everybody's over the trauma at this point. But it's just a reminder that all this can go away in a snap. Facebook, Instagram, and Threads were all down. And what a delight. I actually <laughs> I actually ran into this because I was like, let me check out Marketplace the other day. And then I was like, oh, I can't log in. And I was freaked out for a minute. I tried to reset my password and then I saw it was down. It's broken. But isn't it interesting because last week we had the big AT&T. Yeah. And now we're getting more and more of these outages. That's strange because... Why is it so fragile? Are we mo installing more monitoring infrastructure? Too much bandwidth going to Virginia? <laughs> How am I supposed to find cursed objects online? <laughs> That's weird. I ordered this package to go from California to Seattle, and it's going through Langley, Virginia. That's so weird. 
Anyway, that's it for this episode. Not this week. We'll be back on Friday where there's a lot of AI stories. Goodbye.